prayer request in the house of God. Oh. Well, let's remember the Sanders family this morning. Yes, David, uh, what was his name? Chuck. Chuck. We call him Chuck. Chuck Sanders has uh, passed away. One of old time preachers from way back yonder. And when will that be? Will it be Tuesday, I believe? Okay, and the funeral will be over at our campground there at Elgin, uh, and the uh, the viewing will be at Powers. So you can go online and get the time frame for that. That family needs our prayers. We've got a lot of requests. I'm not going to try to give them all. Uh, Sister Faith Combs, she needs our prayers this morning, the Combs family. And uh, Dale and Lynn Poe, they need our prayers. My brother-in-law, Harold, he's got some upcoming uh, uh, things on his physical body that needs the hand of God to touch him. And God is able to do that. And remember Harold in your prayers. He's going Monday to see if they can okay him to get his body put back together where he's been open for almost a year with his colon. And he's got a huge hernia there that has to be repaired. So, but he has a bad heart, and God is able to touch him. How many of you know God's a healing God? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Brother David back there, continue to remember him. Somebody else, quickly. There is a young girl in Blue Box that's missing. She's 14. She has autism and apparently ran away from home. So, oh pray that goodness. they will find her. Yeah. Home safe. Um, and just the violence in our youth. They had a shooting. I don't know if y'all saw it or not. In the tomb of murder or suicide. Mm. Um, and then mm. left the, 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 the guy that shot his girlfriend and killed her is in the hospital in critical condition. And they apparently have a one year old and a four year old. Oh, no. It's the children, the babies that suffer. Yeah, they were, I think, maybe 20 years old. My goodness gracious. Let's remember that. Somebody else, very quick. Tina. I don't, remember, don't know if it's the same one she's talking about, but my co worker, if it is, she lives in the apartment under that. It's, okay. Um, and, and Tommy is starting, he's doing well, what the doctor told him to do. He's got great fluids, he's feeling better, but he is still playing under. Okay. I'm looking for the day he walks into the house of God somewhere. Amen. Amen. So many children passing away. But you know what? That gives us more to go to heaven for, doesn't it? Amen. It sure does. And we'll get right with God and we'll live holy before him. We can see our loved ones that have gone on. Amen. If they died in the Lord, we'll be in eternity with him. Amen. Somebody yes. else behind me? Would you remember Garrett again? He's running fever still. I remember Garrett. Unspoken. Yes. Unspoken requests of lifting hands. Let's stand all of the house and, and we'll pray and then the ushers will get ready to come. And receive our morning tithes and offerings. But let's believe God this morning. We serve a, a prayer answering God, a mighty God. Yes. He's able, man, to, to do yes. what we ask him to do. Yes. Let's go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we come to you one more time. Look at you as our refuge. Look at you as our strength and our hope. You're the joy, God, that we need within our lives. You are victory. You are peace. You are you are everything, Father, that we need is your people. You have provided it. And, Lord, there are many needs, urgent requests, people that have lost loved ones. And, Father, they're hurting in their lives, and they need your touch upon them. To, to give them peace and send the comforter unto their homes and their hearts and their lives. Father, they're sick and they're living. Reach down and touch them, Almighty God. Encourage hearts this morning. You see, Lord, the need. You know those that are in bondage. Those that are sick, God, yes, we've already asked for them. But God, they too have loved ones that need to be saved. There are those, Lord, that need to be in the house of God this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we serve God and paid the price. Who made the way that we can have eternity with you? Him, deliver and set free in this house this morning. Touch our singers, touch our musicians, and anoint them. Use them for your glory, we pray. And may somebody that might be lost get saved. May a backslider not give their heart unto you. 
the name of Jesus. Come on, ushers, if you would, please. We're going to receive our morning tithes and offerings, and then we're going to turn it over to the music department this morning. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, church. God's able. God's able. Go ahead, Brother Bobby. Pray. Father God, Lord, what an awesome, awesome God you are today. Yes, Lord. Lord, we just need you in our life more and more, Lord. As times begin to get more troublesome, God, we just lift you up high this morning. And we've come into your presence because you said we're one or two are gathered in your name. There you are in the midst. So I know you're here, God. I ask you to bless this offering and use it. That everything be used for the building of your kingdom and the winning of lost souls. It's in Jesus Christ's holy name I pray. Amen and amen. Thanks for it.
I've been running on tests. I look like a spaceship with all those buttons stuck up out of head and all trying to find out what's going on with my equilibrium, my back, my pain in my back, why I can't walk like I'm supposed to. Y'all pray that they find something and they can fix it. Amen. I'm sick and tired. I'm not going to be able to do what Amen. I want to do. Amen. I love the Lord so much, I got so much I want to do. I know without a doubt, He can heal me. Yes. He, he healed me from so many, I, I could tell you probably 10 different things He healed me from. I don't know why He has it on the last two things that I want, but He's told me in a dream that He was going to take care of it, but it'll be one at a time. And I'm ready for that one. Yes. One at a time. And y'all pray that they find something that they can take care of. I don't want to find something they can't take care of. But the Lord can take care of it. So I thank you. Thank you for everything y'all done. I love y'all. I, I, I love this church with all my heart. We love you. <laughs> I love you. God bless you. God touch you. Give the Lord another hand. God is still faithful to his church. God is. I don't want to get ahead of God, but I feel like probably. I should go ahead and preach this morning because somebody needs what the Lord has given me. Okay? Y'all ready for the word? Thank you, Jesus. Before I go any farther, let me pray. Father, thank you for the movement of your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the work that you've already done in the hearts and the lives of people that are here. But, Father, I feel impressed in my spirit that somebody needs this, whether it's in the church, whether it's by live streaming, that you give me the wisdom and the knowledge and how to bring it out and what to say and what to do. And we'll be ever mindful to praise you in Jesus' name. Before I read the scriptures out of John 13 and Matthew 26, you might stand one more time for the reading of the Word of God. The setting is in the upper room. And Jesus is celebrating the Passover with his disciples. And it's going to be the last Passover before he is going to go and die upon the cross of Calvary. And John 13, verses 21 through 27... Go ahead, Terry. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning upon Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he would ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then, lying on Jesus' breast, saith unto him, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And then after the sop, Satan entered into him, and then said Jesus unto him, That that thou doest, do quickly. And before I read from Matthew, the setting has changed, and here in Matthew, the supper of Passover has ended. Jesus has suffered the agony in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he goes to the disciples and he says, Rise, let us be going. Behold, 
It is at hand, the one that betrays me. And then in verse 47, and while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kiss him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And the church says, Amen. I want to minister by the help of God for just a few minutes on a subject that I have titled that your friend is Judas. I don't know if you've ever been betrayed. I don't know if you've ever been through situations. But I think maybe if you have, this is going to help somebody this morning. And another question we might ask is, have we ever been the one doing the betraying? Come on. Come Think on. about it. But all of us have a friend, and his or her name is Judas. And that's what I want to talk on this morning. Jesus had a friend named Judas, and so will <coughs> we. Hebrews 5 and 8, speaking about Jesus, said that though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. Think about that. God incarnate. The son of God that stepped out on nothing and, and took nothing and flung it into nothing and created everything. And light is still going forth and even galaxies are still being discovered today. Yet he Learn by the things that he suffered. The one, one who, who did it, oh, Isaiah 1 and 19 said, if you be willing and obedient, then you shall eat of the good of the man. It takes obedience, and God has to teach us some things. Now, Jesus never sinned, but he was suffered a lot, and he learned obedience through suffering. Obedience makes a difference in whether or not we are going to be blessed by God. Deuteronomy 28, it shall come to pass that if thou shalt hearken diligently, uh, diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all of his commandments, that the Lord will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake you. It says, if Thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord. And then it goes on to tell what type of blessings we're going to have. You're going to be blessed coming in and going out. And basically it boils down to the fact that we're going to be blessed in everything that we do. And if my enemies come at me one way, God's going to scatter them seven ways. Amen. Amen. Remember, we are blessed tonight because we dwell within a blessed vine. We just spoke about that the other night. Right. And it causes me to consider, Sister Joyce, some of the things that have gone on in my life, though I may not have liked what I went through, God had a purpose and a lesson. It allowed them to take place in my life, and he uses the good and the bad. Amen. None of us like painful situations. We don't like things that make us uncomfortable. We don't, we don't like to crucify the flesh. And we don't like to have to do things to where we have to love people we normally would have hated. And we have to quit kicking the dog. And we have to quit screaming at the kids. And we don't like being in a storm. That's right. But Paul said in Ephesians 3 and 16 that God would grant us, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened in the inner man by his spirit. God is saying that what goes on inside of us is greater than anything that can come against us, and no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. And the child that has to be judged against for it is a heritage of the righteous of the Lord. Amen. That's right. 
God. And God has a bow. And he can take what the enemy shoots at us and he can turn it around and it will go right back on the heads of those who sent it forth. Because the God that we serve, church, will fight for us. But could it be that the obstacles that we face in life are simply opportunities for God to bring out of us what is in us? You see, you really don't know what's inside of you until you get under pressure. That's right. And Judas will put you under pressure. Amen. Somebody listening is trying to get rid of Judas. You don't like the pressure that you're under. But at this point in your life, you need Judas. Which brings me to the fact that Judas is no mistake in your life. Now I want y'all to hear me out. His role was crucial in the life of Jesus. In the fact that he would be crucified. One year before the crucifixion, Jesus refers to Judas. When he's talking to his disciples in John 6 and 64. And he said, for Jesus knew from the beginning who should betray him. And in verse 7, 70, one of you, he said, is a devil. God did not pick him and make him betray his son. No, no, no. But he foreknew that Judas would betray him. Judas will keep you on your knees. Amen. You need Judas. Yes. Let me finish this out. For those of you, and I've been right there with whoever I'm talking to this morning, that hate what Judas is doing, you're going to have to fight bitterness. You're still crying over a Judas. And I come to tell you his role is crucial in your life. Nobody helped Jesus get, the, get to the cross like Judas did. And God takes what the enemy is trying to do to somebody this morning. And he turns it around and he will use it for your good. that do we? 
We don't like that. But let me repeat, Romans 8 and 28 declares that what the enemy meant for bad, he turns it around to good to those who love the Lord and are then called according to his purpose. May I suggest to you this morning that your enemies have done way far more for you than your friends have ever done for your spiritual growth. We wouldn't think that, would we? But they have. He has. They cause you to praise God when you're being persecuted. I'm not talking about that silly little praise that we do every now and then. But I'm talking about where you cry and your tears become your meat day and night for, for the, what Judas is doing to you. Where your heart was so broken that you said, God, if you don't help me, there is no help for my life. And it taught you how to really praise God in the midst of all your hurts and your pains. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Judas taught you how to pray. How to press forward. How to seek God. They put you in a condition of desperation. In a hungry place. Where you said, God, I need you. I can't live without you. Yes, amen. <clears throat> and some of you feel like you have been in a boot camp. And somebody has hired some demons to harass you. To teach you how to press in and pray. And heaven done all how to stand. Amen. And God has allowed this. Yes. Because he knew there was something greater on the inside of you. Than what was going forth on the outside of you. And God is molding you into greatness. And he is going to turn something around and you are going to get a new perspective on what you have been going through and you're going to start giving God the praise for the night that you could not sleep for people who broke your heart. You see, your friends create comfort for you. But your enemies will bring rewards and challenges. Because if you did not have an enemy, then you would not have that challenge to overcome that brings a reward. Judas is no accident. Second Corinthians 3 and 2. You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. We are living epistles. We are a living message. And do you realize that God preaches a gospel message through your life and my life every time that Judas does something and we overcome it? Amen. And everything is done in your life and it is allowed for a purpose and it teaches you patience. Terry? <laughs> It teaches you patience and it teaches you victory. How to walk in the spirit instead of the flesh. And if you had not been through what you had not been through, you would not be as far along as you are now. Amen. That's right. And something else about Judas is that there is a challenge. And it is for you not to get bitter. And that's so easy to do. I'm telling you, church, because John 13 says that at the Passover meal, Jesus said one of them should betray him. And John asked who? And he said, he who to whom I give a sop after I have dipped it. Or he who eats bread with me at my table. Or he who has the utmost intimacy with me. That's what he was saying. Psalms 41 and 9, even my own familiar close friend whom I trusted, he who shared my bread has lifted up his heel against me. Psychologists tell us, if they know what they're talking about, 
that the most psychologically damaging thing that can be done to an individual's life is when somebody that you love, you esteem, and you're supposed to be protecting them, but instead you violate them. And that happens. And then it leaves them to where they are no longer able to trust anybody and they can no longer have any healthy attachments. And when you begin to question everything, are you there for me? Can I count on you? Do you have a motive for what you're doing? And when things can't be answered and their foundation is shaken and it results in what's called wounds to the soul. And while Jesus declares in Matthew 18 and 7, offenses might come, and they have to come, it does not mean that you have to be offended. That's right. Come on, church. Because it's not what I go through, but how I go through it that matters. It's how do I not let this thing destroy me to where I do not get bitter. It does not become a cancer in my soul that causes me to rot away at the very core of my soul. Yes. Yes. And as a Christian, where do we find so many of our Judases? Right in your own house. Right in the house of of God, I'm sad to say. We find them in our workplaces. That's right. We find them in our own families. Those who claim to be your friend, who eat bread with you, a friend to your face, and an enemy behind your back. Those tangy who say they love you, and yet they talk about you. Those who fear touching the anointed of God. And if you have ever been in leadership, you know what I'm talking about. You see, the challenge of Judas or of Jesus was to sit at the very same table with Judas on one side and John on the other side and know the agenda of both of them and not treat one of them, Brother Claude, differently than he did the other one. You see, the, high, the greatest revenge that you have is massive success. Do not ever let your enemy get to you. Amen. Judas is not worth you forfeiting your destiny over. That's right. Because his purpose is so that you will get bitter and send a cancer to your soul. So you get hateful and nasty and vengeful. And what you need to do is forgive them and release them and sometimes get away from them. Amen. Amen. If you put your hand in the fire again, you're going to get burnt. If you put it in a den of snakes, you're going to get bit. And some of you, your best days are just ahead. And Judas is going to help you get there. And I'll tell you something else. God knows how to turn your adversities into opportunities. The unique thing about God is that he knows how to turn a negative into a positive. And oftentimes, God brings greatness out of your worst situation. Somebody's going through something. Somebody's facing some persecution. Somebody's facing a Judas. The church, we have been through the fire. We're still standing. That's right. Come on. Come on, church. Amen. We've been through the flood, but we didn't drown. We're still here. You've been through some things that you thought literally you were going to die in. But God has brought you out not to not to just survive, but to thrive. Amen. What the enemy meant for bad, God is turning it around. There was a reason that I ate commodity cheese and was dirt poor when I was a child. It was so that I could learn to have compassion upon the poor and learn 
somebody else out of a pit and say, the God that brought me out can to bring you out of the same circumstances. Right. Let Come me on. tell you about Jehovah yeah. Jireh. Yeah. Yeah. He can bless you through the worst situation. So you can, you can got to learn to accept the yeah. painful things and the crying and the tears and the wounded souls and, and the bleeding hearts that have been made to be that way are going to be healed by the power of the Almighty God. One final thing about Judas. You have got to learn how to praise God for your Judas. Come on, church. I'm telling you something it's not easy to do. That's right. But you've got to praise God for your enemy because that person was really a blessing in disguise. You're not condoning what they did. No, sirree. But you're praising God for what you have learned from it. You see, persecutions will strengthen you. Trials and trauma will build you up. Tough times won't last. But tough people will. Yes. And Judas will betray you and break your heart. But Jesus stood back and he said, Judas, my friend. That's what he said. My friend, what you have to do, do it quickly. Because Judas, when you kiss me with that kiss of betrayal, I realize that my hour of glory is about to come forth in my life. Judas, most people would cry over that kiss. But do you know what you're going to do? And you know what? It's going to hurt. That cross is going to hurt. It hurt Jesus. Yes, it did. But he said, on the third day, I'm going to rise again. Hallelujah. And I'm going to rise yeah. up. And I'm going to have the victory over this. That's right. That's right. Come on, Jesus. What do you do? Do it quickly. Do it quickly. Hallelujah. Some of you have been going through something and you have felt the kiss of Judas. You have felt the enemy's hand. Tell them, Judas, my friend, do it quickly. Because when you kiss me, it is a sign that God is getting ready to manifest his glory in my life. Amen. Stand on the house. And Judas, I know that when you were kissing me, God was preparing a banqueting table in the very presence of mine enemies. Do you hear me, church? You meant to destroy me, but God was really setting you up. And what you meant for bad, God meant for good, Travis, in our lives. Kiss me quickly, Judas. Because when I feel the sting in your, your kiss and, and the breath of my enemy, then I know that God is ready to manifest his glory and every step is taking me closer to my destiny. Amen. <laughs> and do you know what? People who did not want me to succeed and did not want me to be blessed, they're going to have to stand up and say, God is with her. Amen. And they're going to have to say, God is taking her up and she's not going down. Woo! Because God's got his eye on Judas. He 
he knows exactly what Judas has done to you. And if Judas doesn't repent, Judas is not going to make it through. You see, bow your hands. Almighty God, Father, I've done to the best of my ability. And I know that this word is needed somewhere. And it's going to do the work that your spirit sends it to do. Father, there are people that have been hurt. A lot of them in churches. Church hurt is a, is a hard thing to go through. And God, they need healing in their spirit. They need to release that. Because it's causing them to get bitter. It's causing them heartaches and it's not worth it. There's jobs on the workplaces that people try to destroy other people. It's not worth it, Lord. I pray, God, that each and every one of us would be able to release those that would do these kind of things. Pray for them and place them in your hands because, God, you're well able to handle what we can. But we need to go forward in these last days and work and labor for the kingdom. We don't have time to sit back and fight disputes and things that are going on that's not worth a hill of beans. Father, I don't have to defend myself. You are my defense. And Lord, I love you and I honor you in this house. And I pray for that one that's been hurt, that one God that's got a need in their life. And, and they've got heartaches that are, that are breaking their hearts. And, and they never ever thought that that person would do them that way. I pray for them. Help them to pray for that individual that's done them that way. And release it unto you in Jesus' name. As she gets a song, I'm going to open this altar. And you don't come and tell me anything. This is between you and God. Maybe you've gone through a, a Judas situation. Or maybe somebody in your family has gone through it. Why don't you come and pray for them? If you've got the need, you pray for yourself. But I'm going to open this altar. And most of all, let's ask God to search our hearts. To forgive us for every time we may have offended or hurt somebody. Whether intentional or not. To forgive us. And help us to go forth and do the work of the king. Come on, the altar's open. Talk to the Lord.